Hey everyone, welcome to my next video. Uh, for those of you that don't know, my very first video that I uploaded was about a very simple basic how-to when it came to gardens and design. I haven't updated that in quite a while, so I thought today I would do a video on a bit more complex building and design. I have set up an area already uh, to show you and to use for this video. Now, at first, it's probably gonna make your brain hurt because I did want to make sure it was um, a bit more complex, a little bit more outside the box so that you could see exactly how you could turn something that makes absolutely no sense into something beautiful. All right, so let's have a look at what I've got first and then we'll walk through what we're going to do. All right, here, all right. So this is part of my town remodel and I have moved all of the buildings and put them in well, a, a place that makes sense to me in my mind and hopefully by the end of this video will start to make sense to you as well. As you can see, it's like, what on earth am I going to do with this to make it look good? Well, I think I have a few ideas that you might just like. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is to map out our pathing. I find it's the best way to actually get a good look at which spaces you're going to need to fill, which ones can be left, and exactly what you can do with them. All right, so we'll just go ahead and do that. I've got a few items here already set up so that we can just grab them. Um, now, this might not necessarily stay this particular material uh, that I put down. This is just to see where our paths are going to go first. So we're going to use um, some palm wood because it's nice and light and you can see where it goes. Obviously we'd start from here. We do have to remove those to put the thing down then and put the gates back. These aren't necessarily going to be the gates that remain either. But we'll see exactly how it looks. So we definitely need our piling to go straight on through. We also need it to go up to where our stairs are going to be, which will be... We can make it even so it's in the middle, but for John, I find that it's probably better to line up with his door and go that way. We can put all these gates back in later. All right, so coming up to the museum... Probably go. Oh, I can get my coordination right. I'm sure you guys are used to that by now. Okay. Museum it wants the entryway there. Now the whole concept of this design is based on a walkthrough type little village. There will be a main road that goes up around the outside, which I'll also do today, so you can get that sort of visual as well. But I wanted something a little bit more countryside, a little bit more relaxed, rather than having a straight row of shops. I apologise, my voice is a bit croaky this morning. <laughs> I've been having a little bit of trouble keeping up with so much talking with these videos. Hopefully we'll get there and yeah, that looks good for that one. Bring that, oh, I don't want a path there. Now it's a choice whether to take it flush against the shop all the way or to come down the middle. I prefer to come down the middle and leave a little bit of room for some gardens or some other designs and things like that. Rain's a little bit of a different setup. So she actually only has one path leading in because of the design that I plan to do in her little section. We're actually not going to be having a too wide path go all the way through. Don't be afraid to change that up either because it can be a lot of fun seeing it transition throughout the different areas, but it still of course brings it um, cohesively together eventually once you've got everything in. So we're going to have a little bit of a stepping 
pathway through to her. And then of course up the stairs. So that's basically going to be Rain's bit of um, pathing. Right over there. Take this one up. And then out through here. We'll start back down here because we do only have one pathway up that way. Make sure to keep our doubles where they're supposed to be. here. I'm going to run out of this pathing, but it's okay. We can just grab another one. As I said, it's just to mark it out. Okay, I have put a pond up here for, um, for Melvin there. We don't want to go too close to it because we want to be able to still get all those ferns and everything growing. We'll go this way. Mr. Franklin here has his own pet dog. Well, that would be a bit cute. So I'll put those fences back so I can keep him in. Okay, so we want to go that side. No, we want to go this side. That way, like that. And then to the bank, of course. And fill that one in that side. There we go. I'm planning on a bit of a seating area over here. So I'm just going to bring a pathway down there show that there's going to be something in here. Just like that. See already the pathways are making quite a bit of difference of linking up the different areas. Head on up this way. It's the front of our village. the entryway. Right, I need to go in and do Franklin. I also have a bit of a special thing for Franklin here too. Got one of those crashed satellites. I decided to keep it because I thought it'd be a great addition just to sort of decorate his area given what he does. Um, and I'll show you how I'm going to build that up to make it look like a bit of a like it's crash landed. We might actually keep his pathway just to there. We can even dot him a pathway as well through. So that's our pathways done for this area, linking everybody up. I think there's one more that I forgot down here because we have Erwin now. And for those of you that haven't actually seen much of um, my previous videos or my live streams, um, I did update this animal area recently and I have put Erwin in there. So we have a little pathway to him. which I will then probably dot a pathway through to his actually built building as well. But for now, we're just going to work on this area and look at the design aspect. There we go, because I'll show you now how to build up that area with the satellite to make it a um, bit of a crash site. Okay. 
So we have it here. It appears to be a little bit random, a little bit messy with it. You can always take away or put back whenever you want to. So don't be afraid of, you know, what you might feel is messing up because it's not messing up. It's just a matter of creating a piece of art. So we'll also make sure that it looks like he destroyed pieces of the land too. Bit like this and then we'll have this is coming up as well. Excuse me. Thank you. Oh, I'm going to get ourselves up there. It's really just as simple as that. And look, we've got a crash site. We don't have to add any grass or anything to this area because... We can add a little bit, I suppose. Um, but we can keep it mainly dirt because that's exactly what's exploded. Everywhere. We might leave that. Okay. So that's basically all you need to do. You can build it up bigger and wider if you think it's had more impact. You can create it, you know, a bit more of a hole underneath it, if you like. It just depends on your taste, the area that you're in, and how much you want to do with it. Because it's Franklin's um, area and it's only a small area, I'm not going to do it too massive. Otherwise, it's going to overpower the aesthetics of the whole area. So we have that. Now, my plan to help separate all the buildings and still give them their own personal area is I'm going to add quite a few trees. Go and grab those. Pick up all these grass seeds. these tools back in All right, um now I'm gonna want, I've got my shovel these are my two favorite to use I'm gonna have to go get some more of these ones but yeah so what I'll do is I'll take my chainsaw and I'll go to my little tree farm that I just built bit of a spoiler in this video because I'm not supposed to show this one yet we need the trees. And I'll replant them for the next one. <laughs> All right, we'll start with that much pine cones and we'll go from there. I do like using trees as a shielding aspect because it can create an element of surprise too when you come through it's like oh, that's what's behind those trees now to shield it off from the the big black road that's going to be coming down here i will be putting trees up here and i'll be putting them at different levels and then putting some hedging around the side i'll show you exactly what i'm going to do I always struggle a bit with placing these sometimes. <laughs> Be a bit of a pain. It's 
So again, just making it a little bit more less uniform when doing this so that you get a pretty good result. Hello, doggo. Here we go. What you doing? Getting in my way? Okay. If you're wondering why I'm placing down the seeds at the moment and not actually doing anything with them, you will see it's just a little bit of a quicker trick to planting. Technically, I could have laid them all down and then just um, built up the areas I want to build up so it automatically planted, but I didn't think of that, so here we are. So now I just go through with my shovel and bury them. By building it up like this and keeping some on a higher level, some on a lower level, you get a really great, um, basically just aspect of, it gives it more natural sort of look to it because it's not just one straight uniform line of trees. Gives it some dimension, that's the word I was looking for. A little seedlings. So what I'll do is I'll finish off um, planting all of these down and I'll have a few sleeps so that they grow up a bit and I can show you exactly what they look like. Okay, so we are back and the trees have grown up now. I'll give you a bit of a look on the inside of how this looks. Just that little bit of screening, that little bit of privacy and just adds a little bit of pop to the whole thing. Um, now what I did do as well, in case you aren't aware, is I did place the seeds of grass back down underneath as well, just that they've got some green at the base of them. And that's just as simple as taking a grass seed and clicking on the square like you normally would. Now, as I said, I was gonna frame this as well with some hedges. So we'll go ahead and place those in for you. Now, what this is gonna do create a more inviting look when you drive on past the town. Okay, as you can see here, quite a nice finishing edge to this side. I'll go back to more on the inside design aspect of it all. What I do plan to do as well is to line these areas with trees right here on the sides of each building. Just gives them a little bit of that privacy look as well and um, sorts them out a bit more. I am going to leave them just on the one level this time just because they are next to the buildings and they're not as a sort of up and down a round wall that you would have on the outside. Doesn't mean that you can't plant them on different levels. Go ahead and experiment with that because you might find that you like that look. And also don't be afraid to use the gum trees, <laughs> which are the lighter ones in the background. 
they will add a really nice aspect to you, uh, to your island. I just, um, personally, this is my taste. So I'll just do one here, one side here. So we need to get some more pine cones, but I'll do that in a minute. What this does is it does create a lot of green. So you will need to use your colors to really bring out the rest of your build. That one. We'll grab our flower beds, so we'll be using those as well. Um, as our flowers, and seeds, bush. Um, what else we got? Some yellow bottles. We'll take most of this with us. Not sure if I use the archways yet, but let's have a look. So again, I'll put that grass down here just to make sure it looks a bit cleaner, a bit neater. Some people like the dirt down the bottom. Gives it a little sort of a border around the tree, so you might like to leave that as well. Um, I think I'll use these ones here. For John. I'll dress up the side of his building like this. So if again, if you remember my, my rule when it comes to ferns, use lots of them. And I always place them in first. And again, it's a matter of taste from there on in and just your favorite flowers. I am going to be updating everything when the new update comes out, so you guys will have to stick around for that one. I've got um, a few new items coming in. I won't spoil it right now for those that don't want it spoiled. There has been a few hints on the Discord server. <laughs> and it's going to look really awesome updating with those things. So basically we're going to have these trees growing up nicely here. We've got plants along the sides. We're going to have some more trees down here for this guy. And there is, of course, things that we're missing, which would be the steps, which will come up here. We still need a little bit of a design on this side. So what we can do is I'll grab some stuff and this is specifically just for John here. I think we will use one of these. We'll need some lighting around. I like these lights, so I'm going to keep them. I after then I was after I have them on me I have them on me the fern vases and stuff okay because we have the two ferns at the at the front here I wouldn't use a fern vase around this area because it just create too much so I'll probably use a yellow bottle there's our bench all right so John can have a little bench right here sitting We'll get our yellow wattle. We'll just frame this area. I do like to frame. If you find that that's a little bit too off center for you and it just sort of drags your eye away, you can always remove that one. Move the chair in. Just grab that back out. to here and place down the wattles either on the outside here or another garden bed down whichever makes you feel more comfortable I like the wattles because they give you a little bit of yellow there all right now he does have a nice area here that we can use so what I might do is go find my lawnmower where did I put it there's one just back over here. I'll go grab it. 
Come and mow the lawns. It makes a big difference. You'd be surprised. Oh, there it is. Just grab that. Now, <laughs> if any of you know me, I suck at mowing these lawns. So excuse me while I pay, play a little bit of bumper lawnmower. I usually go bouncing off of everything. Which I might actually create a game of that on this island. A few lawnmowers. Here I'm bumping into each other. Okay, so that's good there. I'll give this side a bit of a mow too while we're here. Okay. And backing up. Oh, see I did tell you guys. I was terrible at this. So we'll just pop this over here for now. All right. That has a basic front design for him as well. And just to get this area a little bit more uplifted, what we can do is create another seating area here, or we can plant some fruit trees and things because if we know John, he does sell bush limes and bananas. So we can personalize his shop by putting some here. We'll go grab some fruit. I have down the back here yes I have to clean up my animals there is poop and stuff everywhere so we will harvest just a little bit of each and the bush limes three four okay I'll put some and I hope that they come around the right way otherwise I have to cut them back down again and turn them around well hope that they turn around it's gonna be really annoying Get some bush limes here oops to fix those up <gasps> what are you doing Where are bush limes? Oh, let me just go grab some more. I right, shouldn't need any more than that. Because you also don't want to overwhelm the area with too much of the same thing as well. So that's basically how our fruit trees are going to go. We might even just, we'll add um, something else on the ends here, but not the fruit trees. Bury them. Again, I'm just going to put that grass back in as well. It 
doesn't have that mode look there, but that's okay because we do have trees planted. All right, so on the end here, what I'm actually going to be planting is, did I bring them with me? Yes, I did. Is some bottle brush or bottle, probably bottle brush because I've got the bottle over the other side and we don't want to, oops, wrong one. Copy that element too much. Bags are getting full already because I'm taking on too much, too many things at once. There we go. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'll fill in that side with the trees. I'll sleep for a bit, let this all grow up, and you'll be able to see exactly what I mean when it comes all together for you. Okay guys, so I have had my sleeps and everything to make everything grow up and this is how it's turned out so far. We have our little area here. I did accidentally harvest the apples. <laughs> so we do, would normally have another pop of red there. Now I did not like, when I did come and have a look at this, I did not like the second, um, was it bush slime trees here at the front? So I'm actually going to cut them out and put something a little different in there. Where's my chainsaw? Which I put away, so I'll have to go grab that again. While I'm doing that, I'll have you give you a look at here too with the trees all up as well. And the ferns in the front. Oh, the ferns, the bottles in the front. If you feel like this looks a little bit too plain for you, you can always add some garden beds in around here if you feel like garden beds. Basically the sky is the limit. Whatever you think you might feel looks good, we can put in. Um, so that would be like that. And then you'd have your ferns and your flowers, of course. Oops. Get rid of the one thing I was just about to use. So in with the ferns. There and there. And then out with the color using the purple opposite the red just so that the red isn't oops oops right dig him up doing well aren't i <laughs> pop that in there pop that in there and we get rid of So as you can see, that just sort of gives it a more lush environment there. If you feel like it's too closed in for you, you can always take those trees out and add something else in. I'm going to wait and see how everything else comes together first to see if I want to take those trees out. Get rid of these two bush limes. Careful not to harvest everything. That box is full. Oh well. So what I'm going to put... Oh, see, I did it. <laughs> I actually got the banana tree too. Alright, so what I'm going to do here for something a little bit different is I'm going to get the flower pots and the bush seeds. And they create a really awesome effect, which I will show you. Like that. See how they come over the side of the pot like that? Which I really like. Just adds that little element in there. You might want to consider also switching these around and having the bottle brush in the back and these pots in the front. And I'll give you a look at how that looks on this side. <laughs> Pockets are so full. Would be this in the front and of course the waddle in the back all right which you might find is a lot i don't know neater for you 
we'll have a look at that in a minute. What I need to do is just dump a few things and clean up. So I can show you what else I'm going to put in that area. Um, take your apples. Let's pop these in here for now. Pick up all those items. In the middle here what I do plan on doing is putting a table people to have their little fruit at stop and have a chat a bit of a picnic and then to just finish off that area I've got a couple of these just in the corners here So what I'll do is I'll let this get fixed up for you and I'll show you what that looks like. And we're back. So as you can see, it makes a bit of a difference there, bringing that forward. And if you still don't like the aspect of having the pot and the bush in this particular area, which it can be a little bit off-putting, we can also put things like or you can pop another bird bath in if you feel like that might frame it a little bit better. Or we can put in a statue on either side if you've got access to those. Either going this way, like this. Or you can even have it framing it going this way, like that. There's just a couple of little different things you can do with the area. Of course, you can switch it up and use any kind of trees or, you know, bushes that you happen to personally like as well. What I can also do to give it just a little bit more of a, a little bit more dimension is to put some pathing underneath the seating area. Like this, so it actually looks like it was meant to be that way. like that so that's a nice sort of little area that you can do there if you are interested in adding a little bit of a unique maybe glow to it you could always plant some of the oh not the bird buds we don't plant those the glowing mushrooms some people might find that it's a bit too much or whatever in this particular area. I think it's kind of cute. Give that a little bit of a glow aspect. We'll get you a little bit of a look at that one. And so this is a little bit of a look with the trees thinned out for you as well. If you felt that it was too much. Okay, and then this is a bit of an idea with the gum trees in, in place of those um, little fir trees. Oh, I didn't put them on, I only put them on one side for you. And this is a look with just gum trees, which is kind of a nice, airy, lighter feeling to it. This is those ones. Or for an entirely different look, we can add in some of the bottle brush and wattle to keep it nice and clear, but still have that pop of colour around him. I've added one of those pots with the um, bush seed in it, in there, just for a bit of a different look on that side. So normally I'd have the size match up, but I just wanted to give you a bit of um, a look at the different options that you could do. All right, well, we might move on from John at the moment now that you've seen a bit of what we can do with this particular area. What I'm going to do next is 
get the black road in I'll just show you what that's going to look like so we are going to have a main road that goes straight down past the town and through that section down there and that's to lead to the other areas if you've watched my other um my other videos or my other streams you'll know that i've got a whole lot of different things down that end to get to so we want to be able to allow people to do that now what we might do is we'll run the middle section up this way i haven't quite taken everything out down here yet so kind of getting the idea of where this road goes let's chop you out By all means, guys, if you have any sort of ideas or opinions on, on the things that you're seeing, leave me some comments and I'd be more than happy to come back in and give them a go and we can actually see what they would do. Let's grab that compactor. What I'll be doing is bring it around to this front area here and there would be a car park that comes in here with a pathway leading to here that would come all the way around nicely secreted behind the bushes and everything so it's not interfering with the main town area and the build there there will also be another road coming out from here going down that way for a special build that I'm going to be doing on my live stream my next one so let's have a look here so this is all grown up in the amount of times I've had to really really sleep <laughs> to get those trees going the way that I needed to to show you uh, so this pond area is looking really nice now for that section but so we've got John we had him like that we're showing you how the road can go There's some different ideas here now what happens to this sort of build is that I would need to find a way to make the museum here unique but cohesive to the zone that it's coming from and leading into. Now the main way that I can do that is to pull the flowers in with garden beds. So that is the easiest way. I'm not going to put fruit trees in that's going to stay here I don't need to bring them across to this one in order to create that cohesiveness so what I could do here in, in this section is I could put some garden beds up on here like I have there with John to give that similar element down the sides but also what I might like to do is to play with some water and I can do that by creating a water feature down the sides and it's not as hard as what it might sound <clears throat> so basically what we need to do is dig out exactly where we want the water to go which will be along here and along the other side so for example come down do this Now we can do it too deep or even three deep. It depends on how much you want showing above the water um, and how much you want it just to be the water. 
Now, we can do several different things. We can lay tiles down so it's just shiny water. We can lay tiles and flowers down so it looks like a shiny ground with flowers coming out of it. Or we could just put flowers in it with the dirt bottom or perhaps a tropical bottom like over in the ponds. I'm Because you can see what's happening with the tropical already over there, I'm actually going to show you what it looks like with a shiny sort of pathing down in there and a... Um, and flowers scattered on top. I'll just dig out this side as well. We do not let the water in until we've got everything where we want it, just in case we want to dig down because it's very difficult to place uh, tiles down once you've gone too far and the water's too deep to stand in. I'm going to keep it nice and shallow for this sort of um, explanation on this side and I'm going to do deeper on this side just so that you can see the differences between the two. You can keep it shallow there and go deeper here and then go deeper still one more down. Let's have a look at that. Probably not that one. Probably going to leave that one and take this one. So I can show you all the different depths to this and the different effects the tiles have. Stop rid of this. So we'll choose out our tiles now, put them away. So we can have a bit of a honeycomb edging. We'll see what that looks like. Put all these things away that we're not going to be using right now. Not you. We're going to look at some pearl pathing and some, I think I have it on me, the pattern path as well. And mushroom. Oh, wrong way. So on the shallow side here, I would more than likely um, just stick with a light colored tile in there by itself like that and pop our flower. I'll have to go get our flowers in a minute so I'll just do this side with the tiles first I might decide to decorate with this one and have maybe gold leading in we'll have a look at what the pearl looks like underwater as well So we'll get that off because we'll look at the um, other two tiles that we need to do there. So of course the tile one there and mushroom down the bottom. Now normally I would not use as many mediums in the one section because or as many different designs sorry in the one section because it might be quite off-putting. But this is just to show you what can happen. All right, we'll go grab our flowers now. Put some of this away. just scatter them through. Generally this is probably the one place I hold back a little bit when it comes to the, the ferns because you have to dig up the tile and plant it directly down into the ground. You can't actually just place them on top like you can the flowers. But no. So just for a bit of a rough oh, design here we can do that. Bring that in here. Here, maybe some red through there. Okay, now I'll show you what we do to get the water into there. It's quite, it would be easy if we um, didn't have the tree in there first, but I'm going to chop that down just to make this a quick little show. 
across the water here. We're just going to take it directly in. Like this. Take it on the right thing. There we go. That's going to fill up that straight away. And that's going to give us that kind of look there. Take into account that we're not going to have all this grassy stuff up in front of it. And we have our fern seeds on us. No, we have to go grab those. Put this in like I normally would. We can do that or because we've got the flowers down here so much what we can do is we can grab the bush seeds which I do not have on me either and see that so grab those bush seeds and put them where we put those flowers in the garden beds So it keeps it green up top. You've got your flowers here. And that water would be filled in on the side. With your fence back in place. So that is an option. It's a bit of a subtle option. But you'd then probably just have some seeding in here to look at it. But it is quite... I suppose low down and subdued. I find that this sort of shallow water with flowers works the, works the most when it is a like a centerpiece through here say with walk side, walkways either side. So you're walking past it and not having it tucked away. It's quite down and would need probably this fencing stuff to go away in order for it to look quite right. As for our area here we can um, put some flowers in here if you like, and we can see what they look like down underneath. Just a scattering. I'm not going to fill it up like the other side. Pick one up here. Okay. So what I'm going to do to put the water in here is I'm just going to bring it across. So I'm going to need that shovel to get rid of that tile to start with. Just for a little while. And these two. My pockets are full. Of course they are. And again, I'm just going to bring it directly from here. Worry about that right now and let it in through there okay sun is going down a bit so it is a little bit darker that again gives us a look at what we might need to do there so having that mushroom is going to light it up a bit but probably not quite enough from that far down Have a look at it with a bit of better sunlight or at night too with a mushroom and then it's not with sunlight so this is it of a night time and as you can see that uh, mushroom path is down way too far to have too much of an effect so if you wanted a really subtle glow at the bottom of water in anything like a pool or something like that then of course you could use the mushroom and that would give that subtle glow from so far down whereas the white Farthing tile does give you a little bit of a glow 
underneath most flowers and things but again not as shiny as before so you do have to use lighting in these sorts of situations and that can be tiki torches or even those little garden lights underneath the water or beside the water and it will help a lot so if we go up to like one of these we'll just say oh, oops pop him there this is the kind of effect that you can expect to have under some sort of lighting okay now if you don't like it uh, which i'm not going to use it as a decorating point here with the museum it doesn't take much you just lift up your tiles fill in the dirt as you go and flowers will come out with it so i'm going to organize that and in the morning we'll look at what's what would be more suitable here in this area all right, so it is morning now and I filled in all those gaps so that we can get to um, the real decorating of this area. I hope from the, what you've got from what I've just shown you with the water is not only what it can do and what it looks like and what you can use in it, but also to not be apprehensive about just experimenting with it. Because if you don't like it, like I've just done, you can always just take it away. Now with the museum, we do have two different sides. So we've got an open side here and a closed off side here. So I will be decorating them differently. Although essentially up here will probably be the same. I'll duplicate the garden beds. What'll be on the sides will be different. Down here is more likely to be more just garden beds or some low bushes, things like that. Whereas over here, we're probably going to throw in a seating area. All right, so let's get to that. And we're going to add a little corner piece in as well. Now, what we can do is we can have a seating area here as well, but it's going to be quite different. We need our benches, don't we? And then it will be to the other side. Okay, um, grab some of these ones, they're always good. I do have some fountain city in there, and yes, I do plan to use them for you guys. So if we were to put, say, a chair back in here, we'd be looking at the bushes quite close to them. But if we were to put it on this side, we would have, if sitting down, a bit more freedom of view, if you like. So you'd be looking out over the water between the trees um, at the landscape. That could be a secret little corner in there that you can do that in. So to bolster that, I would keep what I'm putting beside it and around it quite minimal so I wouldn't be planting anything like the big bushy bottle brushes or anything like that um, I might put even the pots themselves will probably be a bit too big so I'm thinking probably we can have a look at the fern vase although we do have a lot of ferns up there already it's cute but I think it's far too much green it does bring it down, but we do need something to offset all of that green. So let's think of what we can do with that. We could possibly replace these with the purple vases, which I will go and get. Okay, so I've got those now and I can pop them on either side of the seat here. Like this. Brings a bit of colour. Keeps it from being too green. But they are quite small as far as sitting right next to the chairs go. So again, this is going to come down to personal aesthetics as well. More so than it is, you know, 
this is what you should do and shouldn't do. To fill out the area, we can just simply put a couple of garden beds down here and a couple here. We already know that we've got the walkway here. It's going to be a certain way, so this will probably still remain grass. Let's put some flowers into those ones. Carry the purple through from that side. feel it's too much purple what we do is we just switch it out with the pink so I can always go there or even the other way around and that would tie the red in from this area across as well So that's starting to come together. I may choose to put a path down here just for a little bit of a added depth to it. But for now, I'll leave it like that. And in this corner, I'm thinking we will put a bird bath and a couple of bench seats beside it. And probably round that off with the yellow wattle vases. that's going to get in the way of walking through so we either don't put the wattle vase down or we cancel this flower bed here and here to create the pathway still down Having done that, I would probably take out these gun beds as well. I still feel like it needs something here, and that might be as, just as putting in a couple of trees to really finish off the area. Let's try that. Uh, let's go for maybe a gum tree. just a subtle bush line. So put the gum tree in the corner. Oh. Bush line here. We could also have a gum tree growing up here. stuff in there okay I'll work on this side before I go and have any sort of sleep to get those trees to come up to see what they look like I would carry that carrot sorry curry <laughs> I would carry the gum tree through across to here just to give it some consistency but I wouldn't necessarily need to do the back one As for here, I would get out the cobblestone pathing or some sort of pathing, maybe even the pattern to put underneath these items. Where are my bench seats? Oh, no, down there. Yes, you are. OK, 
Okay, like that. If it hurts you too much, you can put the last one in there just to square it off. And maybe even a little coffee table right here. I'll get one of those in a, in a little bit and put one in just to give you a look. Okay, so this side, I have gum tree there, so I don't have to put another one here if I don't want to sort of carry that two by two through, but I think it would be best in this case that we did. be there and what I'll do is on this side instead of making it all ferns and bushes I will make it flowered to give you the look of what it would be like that but the problem with that if we put flowers that way you're going to need to be okay with things being a little bit off center if you're going to put a bench in so as you can see the purple flowers are slightly off to it looks like they're off to a right hand side there a bit all right so we're going to leave that as it is so let those grow up as far as beside the bench seat we do need a couple of things there so what i would normally do here is to suit it to the actual furniture that's around not do my usual pattern that I would do and I would put the ferns at either end these here maybe those in the middle and then I'll take the, take the fern vases and bring them down in here. So that sort of creates a viewpoint, focal point, where it sort of comes inwards at a diagonal and to this little seating area here. Right. So we'll sleep now, we'll get those trees up and um, we'll see how it's all looking. Okay, so we have got the trees growing up now and as you can see, if I keep gum trees in this area as well as with the wattle and um, that sort of thing, it all ties in and brings it through for a look here. We have this right now, it's quite sweet and on this side like this. So it looks... Um, really nice but it is quite simple to build but still has those complex uh, elements of building on different levels and bringing colors in from other areas to make it all cohesive now given that it's the museum and that i would like a little bit more of a oomph to it i am going to put statues at the front here yeah oh, i need to move over a bit and here which I think just finishes that entryway off quite well. The stairs are not going to stay as being gumwood. It is too orange for the area. It's just not the right color. Even in here, it's the wrong color to put with everything else. But we might wrap it up for this video today, guys. Gives you a few ideas for it for now. And I will be working on the rest of the areas with you in following up videos. So that you can see how it all comes together and what ideas we might be able to come up with like for rain she'll have some special things um, as well as the town hall area i hope you enjoyed this guys i hope it gave you some great ideas and inspired you to um, maybe do some things on your own islands if you have any questions or suggestions please just drop a comment. I'm happy to reply and happy to even look at your suggestions or, or questions and answering them <clears throat> actually in game. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons guys so you can see the rest of my content that's coming out. And as always, everybody stay amazing.